This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In life, there's this constant battle between wanting to stand out and wanting to fit in. You can't have both but it's hard to pick one lane. So the TikTok fit, right? I did a bit on this in my last video and I thought it was just gonna be some funny little, but then I started digging into it and I'm like, wow, there's actually a lot here. Let's just touch up briefly on what is TikTok fit. So the reason I call it this is because sometimes when I'm scrolling, I just get into this pocket of my algorithm where it's like, all I see is this kind of fit for some reason out of nowhere. Like when I first get on Instagram and it's fresh, like first thing in the morning, you know, first thing in the morning, get on that. Sh That's the first thing I do. I get on that sh right at the, is like waking up and then banging the back of your head against the headboard. But anyway, it starts off hot, couple rare pulls, you know, the usual. It's just some good sh bro. It's so good. You know, you have night terrors and you wake up Instagram reels. But then eventually I start scrolling and then I hit the fashion part of my algorithm. And then it's just this type of fit over and over. Not that it's a bad thing but it is just an observation. This happens every time. It's just like, I'm scrolling and I'm like, I feel like I've seen this person five times in the past 30 minutes. And then the trippy part is, I realize that, wow, that's actually five different guys. Like these are individuals who have experienced their own full lives, maybe separate from one another. They probably don't even know each other. Their own worlds scored by their own unique experiences. Yeah, I like to start my morning off by just ripping it through Instagram until I experience Sonder at 2.35 p.m. Because let's be honest, I am not waking up at fucking... Which is all of these souls right here, you know? Quantum entangled through Sambas and tote bags. It's, you know, if you really think about it, it's actually kind of beautiful. But this palette right here, it's really playing around that baggier, relaxed silhouette, boxy, roomy tops, long, wide bottoms, meta sneaker, tote bag, fitted hat, AirPods Max, bro. It is an undefeated combo. Also, there's nothing inherently wrong with any of these choices. Fundamentally, these pieces actually look pretty good together. Nothing bound to a specific brand. And I feel like within this, there's a lot of room to possibly include yourself. But see, the thing is, right? Sometimes, People forget to include themselves. Like, how is this post different from the one that I saw six swipes ago? Like, what is the point of a fit check if we've already checked that fit? We've already checked that fit. Like, but I get it. Like, you know, you got something here that makes you feel good, makes you look good, and you want to show it off, right? But at the same time, I have a lot of things that make me feel good that I don't show off on the internet. Like, you don't see me doing nap checks. I love naps. I think I have great naps. But see, again, like, what, but what would be the point of posting a nap check? Bro, we're not gonna f start doing nap checks. Anyways, the actual piece breakdown of a fit is one thing. But again, you know, do your fucking thing. It doesn't bother me. I've had I've worse today. on my algorithm, dude. I have such bad stuff on there. Like, this is not even that bad. I just wanna talk about the cultural significance of the TikTok fit. Because you might not have known, but this has graced the earth many times before. Some of you might have forgotten. So I'm here to remind you. Cultural significance title card. Uh, look at this fucking title card I made. Okay, so you know how I said the spirit of this fit has appeared in our lives in different forms at different times? Well, you might not remember, but you have loved before. Maybe this might jog your memory, huh? Just the idea of the meta fit. Just these past meta fits. Achilles once said, I would recognize you in another lifetime entirely, in different bodies, in different times. And I would love you in all of this, until the very last star in the sky burned out into oblivion. Isn't that fucking beautiful, bro? I also just found out that he did not say that shit. But my first love, right? The swag era fit. Oh my god. 
A lot of you guys watching might not even remember this fit. Some of you guys were probably kids when this was the meta fit. I'm showing my fucking onk status right now, which is insane. I also found out that there's an Olympic skater that was born in 2012. Who the fuck is born in 2012? I thought they stopped, but this changed my life, man. Without this fit, you guys would not be quality watch time into this video right now. But the second coming of this fit, right? The fog era fits, kind of. More people will definitely be familiar with this, but I feel like this era was the first time people were actually looking into silhouette and styling. And now skipping a bunch of, there was a whole bunch of bullshit after that, but we're just gonna skip to now. This current state of the meta fit, this TikTok fit version, I feel like it's cultural crowning as the meta fit has been completely understated. And I am here to give it its flowers because I feel like there are some good qualities that come with this fit format. First of all, let's compare the piece breakdown of this current state of the TikTok fit compared to past ones. So for the past ones, I feel like there was a massive emphasis on brand pairings. Like Fog Stuff went with Fog Stuff, obviously. h and would be a diffusion and even for this weird minimal era that we were having i feel like uniqlo and cause like you can buy your entire wardrobe from these things but now for this current state of the meta fit i feel like there's a whole lot of just go figure it out energy. Like these three fits right here, they have the same look and vibe, but consist of completely different piece selections. As opposed to back then when you could get away with copying an entire look from just one brand alone. And the reason I feel like this is healthy for the community is because it kind of forces you to analyze something and then to go and source these things on your own, whether it be grailed, vintage, or actually going and finding different brands that you like. You're inadvertently forced to go explore the shit that you actually like, as opposed to just being forced to conform to a brand uniform. And these little exercises, right? Developing a taste for things that you actually like, learning how to source those said pieces, and then figuring out how they all work in your wardrobe. I mean, those are fundamentals that everyone should learn at some point, and somehow, as much as we're talking shit about this TikTok fit, it kind of forces you to do all of that. Kids today have never dressed themselves better. I'll stand on that because I feel like nowadays there's more thought and premeditation than ever. I had the craziest interaction with this kid that recognized me on the street the other day and I was outside and I ran into this kid and he was maybe in high school or something, if that. And the conversation got to a point where he was like, I would love to see John Galliano return to Dior because I loved his work. His archive there is crazy. Like, first of all, when I was your age, I was trying to dress like Tyga. Why are you looking through John Galliano's archive from Dior? I mean, regardless, I feel like that was cool. And it's cool to see how fashion has evolved as a hobby and an interest for the younger generation. And I gotta give props to that kid who just knew his shit. Shout out to that guy loitering outside of the second street in Soho. You're a fucking nerd. All right, guys, I just took another nap. Here's the fucking juice. How do TikTok fit? All right, Christian, shut the fuck up and just tell me how to make the fit. Nah, bro, trust me, when I wear this, it'll be so, it'll be different though, because like, I'm gonna make it look different though. I'm gonna, anyways, it's really actually really fucking easy. Okay, so we're just gonna speed run this. This is actual, actual good advice. I'm gonna talk as fast as I can and be as precise as I can. I feel like it's really easy to build this type of fit if you start with styling your pants first. Usually big or wide bottoms work best as a foundation. As you can see from this spread right here, look at all of them are wearing big pants. Just pick your favorite one and fucking figure it out. All right, fuck it. I'm gonna make one too. I just realized that it might be kind of fun. So I'm gonna pick these jorts. I don't know what I'm actually picking because I'm filming in front of a green screen and I don't know what I'm actually wearing. And for shoes, I would probably throw Tim's on here just to really go full fucking TikTok. But if I'm unable to source Tim's, I'm probably going to wear some geo baskets or some shit. And I'm probably, knowing me, I'm probably going to layer tank top or some shit with the jorts because it'll just be good contrast with an oversized hoodie or whatever. Man, I fucking am so predictable. I actually, I'm the one predicting myself. So fitted hat, tote bag, AirPods Max, bam. I don't have a pair of AirPods Max. And then boom, algorithm sign of the cross right there, baby. Don't, don't fucking look at my fit and be like, wow, Christian, this is actually one of your hardest fits. You've never looked better because am I being ironic or or is this actually good? Because I like I said, there's nothing necessarily bad about this fit. Am I fucking around? But
But am I fucking around and you like it though? See, obviously the template works, guys. And then I can really go anywhere from here. Just pick a good template and then make it your own. That's really all it is. And that's why I always talk about sponsor of this video, Squarespace, because look at these templates, man. Look at all these templates that you can go in and make your own. Now it's really the best place to make a website for anything because they have this website building system called Fluid Engine where it literally puts your website on a grid so you can drag and drop graphic and technical assets to your liking. It's really that easy. I, how much more can you ask for? If only fashion was this easy, but with the, I mean, with this TikTok fit stuff, it kind of is. And as an e-commerce guy myself, I was thinking e-commerce is the biggest headache when it comes to building a website because how are you supposed to figure that out? But now with all of Squarespace's integrated e-commerce tools, whatever you're using, it's really easy to plug and play right now on a website where you can go try it out for free at squarespace.com slash frugal aesthetic where you will get 10% off your first order and a free trial of the website builder. It is that easy, baby. Squarespace.com slash frugal aesthetic. We love templates. We love templates. Look at all these templates. These are the clothes that I was probably gonna sleep in or just lounge around in. And I realized low key, I'm kind of wearing the TikTok fit right now. <sighs> See, you know what I mean? Like I didn't even fucking realize, bro. It doesn't look, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. Bro, who cares?